Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today I am going to explain reactions of carbonyl derivatives. <coughs> what is the reaction pattern? How they do react? And what sort of the molecules they prefer to react with the carbonyl derivatives? In <coughs> previous talk, I do have explained the reactions of aldehydes and ketones. Over there, I have shown you that the aldehydes and ketones undergo nucleophilic addition reactions, and consequently, we receive corresponding alcohols. However, if the reacting nucleophile is a sort of an amine, then our products are supposed to be evenes, you know, which are also a sort of shift basis. So mean the aldehyde and ketones undergo nucleophilic addition reaction. However, if we have carbonyl compounds, which are the derivatives, mean, let's say, if we have a carboxylic acid, hmm? we have a carboxylic acid, we have sort of ester you can write it as carboxylic acid we could have esters the carbonyl compound could be in the form of an amide you know hmm? or the carbonyl compound could be in the form of anhydrides. Anhydrides. Anhydrides, or it could be an acid halide, you know. Acid halide. What does it mean? If we replace over here, we have some sort of an halogen. It could be an acid halide. Acid halide. These are different forms of carbonyl derivatives. What is over here? You can see it's a hydroxyl group OH, where this oxygen wave one idea is an electronegative. So this part could be sort of an electronegative in charge bearing species. In case of esters, we have an again <coughs> oxygen. So this part could carry partial negative charges. Over here, it's an sort of an amide again. It's electronegative nitrogen, so this body could be having partial negative charge. Similarly, over here, oxygen is involved, so partial negative again. Halogens are attached over here with the carbonyl derivatives, so negatives. So, in all these compounds, this side has the capacity to carry negative charge, okay. So once they can carry negative charges, mean they could be as, we can write them as mean nucleophilic parts. They can be nucleophiles, you know. We have an idea, somebody having a negative charge, some entity having a negative charge could act as a nucleophile. So all these entities having negative charges, I can write them as a nucleophiles. Okay, so let's say if uh, <coughs> so let's say these negative charges bearing uh, substituents could be written as nucleophile. So as we have an idea in case of carbonyl compound, this carbon, the carbonyl carbon is supposed to be a partially positive due to the electronegative difference with the carbonyl oxygen carrying negative charges. So the generation of positive charge creates a chance for another nucleophile from the outside to attach at this carbon. What is nucleophile? Any entity having a negative charge or somebody having lone pair. Okay, so they can act as nucleophile. I can write as nucleophile. So it can attack over here at the carbonyl carbon which is positively charged. Whatever the compound is, 
I can write nucleophile OH as NU, OR, NH, amide, and hydra diacetylide. So you can write this body as NU. And then this nucleophile number 2 attacks from the outside. What happens then actually? This nucleophile attacks over here. This charge, the double bond between carbon and oxygen moves up. What happens? It will become O negative over here. Here is our NU1. I can write it NU1, nucleophile number 1. If it is nucleophile number 2, it got attached over here, nucleophile number 2 okay so what is going to happen over here then this oxygen will try to regenerate its double bond the oxygen the carbonyl oxygen will try to regenerate its double bond by shifting the negative charge over here okay to generate a double bond and in order to satisfy the valency of the carbon the nucleophile number one which was attached already with the carbonyl carbon in the beginning it will be kicked out let me explain again <coughs> we have a nucleophile in the form of a negative charge entity in any case all of these compounds so when a nucleophile comes from outside to attack this carbonyl carbon this double bond between carbon and oxygen moves up at its negative charge and the nucleophile gets attached with the carbonyl carbon and in the next process the carbonyl oxygen try to regenerate its double bond by kicking out nucleophile number one. The nucleophile number one will be kicked out. So what is going to happen now? We will have again a nucleophile uh, carbonyl, car uh, carbonyl compound again having NU and plus nucleophile number one in the form of negative charge. So this is the product. Again, it's a carbonyl derivative, carbonyl compound where N nucleophile number 2 has been attached and the nucleophile number 1 has been removed. So what is happening over here? Nucleophile number 1 has been replaced with nucleophile number 2. Means the compound has undergone a nucleophilic substitution reaction. One nucleophile has been removed as leaving group this NU nucleophile number one will be can be called as a nucleo a living group you know the nucleophile number one will be removed replaced substituted by the nucleophile number two giving us the <coughs> carbonyl derivative and which has undergone a nucleophilic substitution reaction so what I'm trying to say you guys any carbonyl derivative having negative entity attached to the carbonyl carbon you know they could undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions aldehydes and ketones in case of aldehydes and ketones we don't have here negative entities no negative entities around over here you know so that's why whenever a nucleophile whenever a nucleophile attack at carbonyl carbon it will not substitute any other nucleophile because aldehydes and ketones do not carry any other nucleophile okay so aldehydes and ketones they undergo nucleophilic addition reactions However, the other carbonyl compound, the other carbonyl derivative, derivative of carboxylic acids, which have just enlisted here, which have been written over here, they all undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction. So you need to keep in your mind, carbonyl compounds could be categorized into two types. The type number one, aldehydes and ketones, and they are supposed to undergo nucleophilic addition reactions all other compounds all other compounds except aldehyde ketones all other compounds are such carbonyl derivatives they undergo nucleophilic substitution reactions so nucleophilic additions on aldehydes and ketones all of the carbonyl derivatives they undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction this is what i'm trying to convey you guys so let me take an example again let 
let's say we have a sort of a benzoic acid you know hmm? a carboxylic acid we have a benzoic acid if someone brings an amine from outside you know we have an idea as amines having lone pair can act as nucleophile it moves up you know mm, it can attack over here the carbonyl carbon and the that will move up what happens we will have O negative we have OH over here we have NH2s we have whatever the substituent with the nucleophile the substituents on the nucleophile are not an issue for the reaction at the moment however they do they do have impacts on uh, the activity patterns on the whether the reaction is fast whether the reaction is slow but at the moment i'm saying we need to see what is the one who carries negative charge or the one who carries lone pair they can attack over here we have a this sort of structure in the next step what is happening here this is try to regenerate over here it's double bond and oh will be removed from here so what is going to happen we will have this sort of a compounds an amide is generated we have an idea this is an amide so an amide is generated okay so oh has been removed so whatever the structure around in this area whatever the structure around this area will not be an issue because this carbon has to be attacked by nucleophile and then this sort of the nucleophile this nucleophile has to be leave act as a living group so it has to act as a living group this is the concept behind such nucleophilic substitution reactions at at, uh, at carbonyl carbons at carbonyl derivatives of carbonyl compounds you know again let me take one more example let's say we have any type of a nucleophile number one the nucleophile number two could be any type you know mean it could be a sort of a simple amine something like that it could be a some sort of a, an alcohol it could be a sort of an halide because we need negative entities in order to attack it over here so they could be anything or they could be some sort of a complex structures as well let's say we have nitrogen this sort of compound let's say we have a compound like this it's a nitrogen you know we can write like this one so again in this structure whatever the substituent whatever the structure that's not an issue what is issue the oops, nitrogen is there and the nitrogen carries lone pair if it is carries lone pair it can attack it can move up and it has to move in the subsequent step so what is going to happen we will have O negative we will have nitrogen over here which is actually in the which is a part of a ring then we have a nucleophile number one it has to come down and then the nucleophile will be removed so what is going to happen over here we will have some sort of a nitrogen yes we have a nitrogen bonded with the carbon and then also the nitrogen has two bonds with the ring so this is how the product could be hmm? so we don't need to get worry about the structures of the compounds which are coming as a nucleophiles what is required somebody having negative charge somebody having lone pair it has to act as a nucleophile and similarly you don't need to get to worry about the structures of the let's say we have a sort of an anhydride over here you know a big structure you don't need to get to worry about that 
what is our here it's a carbonyl carbonate and oxygen so means this could be the nucleophile this is has to act as a nucleophile number one let's say we have another nucleophile in the form of an amine ah uh, it can act as a nucleophile due to its lone pair so it has to attack over here it has to move up so what is going to happen we will have o in this fashion this is around here here is our nucleophile number 2 got attacked then it will try to regenerate as a consequent what is going to happen the bond between carbon and the nucleophile number 1 this is the nucleophile number 1 bond between carbon and nucleophile has to be break has to undergo under it uh, has to undergo breakage you know it has to leave from here as a good leaving group so what is going to happen we will have this sort of nucleophile as a leaving group and we will have this sort of a product having uh, carbon carbonyl carbon carbonyl functionality actually carbon and oxygen bond doubly bonded with each other so this is how the derivatives of carboxyl carboxylic acids or carbonyl derivatives they undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction whenever they do react with <coughs> excuse me whenever they do react with other nucleophile so carbonyl derivatives undergo nucleophilic substitutions the aldehydes and ketones they undergo nucleophilic addition reaction this is the basic difference you need to keep in your mind when you are dealing with reactions of carboxylic carbonyl compounds aldehydes and ketones additions rest of the carbonyl compounds carbonyl derivatives they are going to show nucleophilic substitution reaction how it happens i've just explained to you even then if you have any questions do come up you can leave comments on my face, uh, facebook page or you can put your comments in uh, on youtube channel you know after watching the video thank you very much for your uh, attention assalam alaikum